Edgar Berlanga's former trainer, Andre Rosier, feels that he needs to pump the brakes when it comes to his goal of fighting former WBO junior middleweight champion Jaime Nungia next. That, according to an article released earlier today, June 27, 2023, from Boxing News 24. Apparently, Rosier doesn't need to worry about Berlanga not being ready for Munguia because that fight is not happening. Golden Boy has bigger plans for Munguia, aiming to match him against David Benavidez next. That's a much bigger fight than Munguia fighting the 26-year-old Berlanga, a fighter only popular in New York. You see, when fighters are built territorially, it's a slow process when you start speaking of stepping up to another level because people don't know who you are. You're only a local guy. Huh? A big fish from a small pond. It's one of those sentiments that I've expressed talking about these fighters being built. And we do know that Berlanga was built on cupcakes and cream puffs for the majority of his career. I think his record of uh, 16 straight knockouts stopped as, as soon as he had one step up fight. And that step up was simply a step up beyond what he had currently been facing. His recent victory over Jason Quigley has found him to be a success in his first outing with Matchroom, but Matchroom really doesn't have much for him to look at, especially since the golden rod of Matchroom, which was Canelo Alvarez, has moved on to PBC for a three fight deal. So what's left for Belanga? You have to consider who is out there and that's not much. The slippings are, the, the pickings are slim, excuse me. But when we look at it, Berlanga's promoter, Eddie Hearn, threw out Gennady Golovkin Billy Joe Saunders and John Ryder's names as possible options for his next fight. There's a Gennady Golovkin video coming. Billy Joe Saunders, the last time we checked, looked like Santa Claus. Old Saint Nick, pounds and all. As far as John Ryder, he needs time to heal from the battering that he took from Canelo Alvarez. And what is this recycling men? fighters who have been beaten up pretty good and lost handily in their last fights getting another step up fight for them which is a step over fight for the opponent which in this instance is the a-side which would be Berlanga it doesn't make much sense does it but you can see how they're milking the public and they'll probably try to sell it to you as a pay-per-view Oh, the stench of it all. It is something that you need to complain about, people. Unfortunately, there's no chance of Golovkin and Saunders taking the fight with Berlanga leaving Ryder. That guy might be a little too good for Berlanga, who gets frustrated when he gets hit and is unable to knock out his opposition, even resorting to biting. I've been talking about that lately because we should not overlook it. It is something to be considered when you're talking about spending your dime for fights and for fights that may possibly end in disqualifications due to a guy losing his discipline. You need to reconsider. So after the stage of feasting on low level opposition, it is time for Berlanga to step it up, but not quite championship level. Munguia, even though it was brief at 154, was a champion. And that is not necessarily what he needs. He needs some journeyman action, guys who may have been 
solid contenders but may be on the downside of things but have the type of experience that can draw Berlanga into longer fights across more rounds to gain more needed sorely needed experience will we see that possibly not matchroom has a terrible habit of matching up fighters in fights that on paper it looks like they should do very well next thing you know a guy is in a life and death struggle sometimes even losing so as the article goes on it says we don't want to see berlanga getting angry and biting Ryder or hitting him with repeated low blows berlanga nailed quigley with quite a few shots below the belt last saturday night and you got to wonder if that was a sign of frustration on his part absolutely it was these are the aspects of the psychology of the fighter that I speak about all the time through my content, fight reviews, and editorials. Like a lot of people, the article goes on to state, Rosia didn't like what he saw from the unbeaten super middleweight contender Berlanga, who's currently 21 and 0 with 16 KOs. Last Saturday night against the 32-year-old Ireland native Jason Quigley. What was supposed to be a showcase fight to make Berlanga look good to create a demand for a fight between he and Canelo Alvarez was almost a disaster for the recently inked matchroom fighter, with him losing many of the middle rounds against the highly skilled Quigley. Interesting. You see, when I say what I say, I am not looking through a biased lens. I'm looking through the lens of experience. And there's something about New York fighters like Edgar Berlanga, who seem to be brought along to a certain point. And then when they have to s swim in the deepest of seas, Certain challenges prove tough for them. And there's some type of emotional or psychological breakdown that rears its head. We've seen it before. I don't have to name names. Just look at the top New York fighters of the past 20 years. You can pick several out. Berlanga caught a huge break with a bogus knockdown in the fifth, with the referee Harvey Dock giving him credit for dropping Quigley after the Irish fighter tripped. Corruption. We talk about these officials all the time, right? That was one of two blown calls by the referee who had a dreadful night. Berlanga pressed on Quigley's head in the 12th to force him to the canvas shockingly the referee ru ruled it a knockdown it's unclear if doc's view was partially blocked from the action because it was so evident that berlanga had pushed quigley down where are the sanctioning body presidents to rush over to the scores table and rule it a, not a knockdown and to see instant replay as we've seen Suleiman do on many occasions. Why can't this be uniform and across the board? You see what I'm saying? They make it up as they go. And this too needs to stop and it needs to be pointed out. The article goes forward. Luckily for Doc, the two blown calls didn't change the outcome of the fight because Berlanga was going to win anyway. But if you don't like to see a ref blowing two calls in one fight, primarily when it benefits the A-side home fighter, yeah, we said it, right? How many times now? Rozier went on to add, it's going to be a tough fight. 
is two young bulls coming at each other. Edgar is going to have to pick up his punch count because Jaime throws a lot of punches. And if he's not accurate is one thing, but he stays busy with it. So Edgar will have to pick up his punch count and keep his defense paramount and to not get caught with shots because the kid, Mungia, is strong too. I think he, Berlanga, needs one more, then he can rock. He needs to get the rest of the rust out of his system, and then I think he'll be able to be a contender. Wow. Think about it. It's something that we have to pay a close attention to because there are many people out here who feel and believe in Berlanga. But I am not so sure, people. There are a number of fighters who are running into problems and troubles and not enough people defining or identifying what's wrong and looking to press these fighters in the direction to get needed help. And that's from teaching. That's from how they conduct themselves outside of the ring and far more. But I digress because people want to see these fighters, right? But you don't want to hear about them in a police blotter. You don't want to hear about their battles and bouts with depression. But they're in a sport where they get paid to get hit upside the head. Something's got to give, right? Maybe you will for that ticket to his next fight. This is Stormy B-Man. Shout out to the mighty LDBC and liberated perspective, a third eye view of the world. For more content such as this, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Let me know your thoughts about Edgar Belanger and who you'd like to see him fight next. The names that were run off in the article seem far-fetched and Canelo has left the building. What do you think? Peace to everyone out there and everyone please remain safe.